His Excellency Ambassador Morten Hoglund, Ambassador Norway to ASEAN, Mr. Kian Nguyen, Director of Sustainable Development ASEAN Secretariat, all distinguished judges and all finalists. Good afternoon from Jakarta. Welcome to the final round of ASEAN Youth Social Innovation Challenge, Finding Alternative Solution to Plastic Pollution. This competition is an initiative undertaken by ASEAN Norwegian Cooperation Project on local capacity building for reducing plastic pollution in the ASEAN region or ASEANO, organized by the Center for Southeast Asian Studies and Norwegian Institute for Water Research in collaboration with the ASEAN Foundation, ASEAN Chesar Network, and Unilever Indonesia. To open this event, I would like to please invite Mr. Kian Nguyen, Director of Sustainable Development ASEAN Secretariat, to deliver the opening remarks. For Director Kian, uh, time is yours. Um, thank you very much. Um, Excellency Ambassador uh, Morten Hoklund, Executive Director Dr. Arisman, distinguished judges, colleagues from ASEAN Foundation, ASEAN CSR Network, uh, participants and friends, I'm very pleased to uh, represent the ASEAN Secretariat in welcoming you to the final round of ASEAN Youth Social Innovation Challenge, finding alternative solution to plastic solution. I would like to thank the government of Norway, especially the mission of Norway to ASEAN, the Norwegian Institute for Water Research for supporting this initiative under the ASEAN Norway Cooperation Project on local capacity building for reducing plastic pollution in ASEAN region. <coughs> I would also like to express my appreciation to the Center for Southeast Asian Studies for excellent arrangement of this exciting challenge. Due to rapid coastal development and exponential population growth over the last decades, ASEAN faced um, the looming threat of mismanaged plastic waste that pollute our oceans. Since uh, 2016, there have been more reports on plastic waste to our oceans and the amount of plastic in the world oceans have been rapidly growing year by year. With the projection that there would be more plastic in our ocean than fish by 2050. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic further magnifies the plastic threat to our oceans due to the surge of use and disposal of personal uh, protective equipment, which is made up mainly by uh, product, uh, plastic products. Many reports and studies have also shown that marine plastic pollution is a transboundary issue, as highlighted by the organizer, which I quote, up to 95% of plastic in our oceans is transported by 10 major rivers, eight of which are in Asia. National and local governments, businesses and international community are increasingly taking action on plastics, as this issue cannot be solved by one single institution or actor. It requires collaboration and active participation from all stakeholders group, including social businesses and the role of youth as our future change makers. This ASEAN with social innovation challenge therefore is very timely and fitting in mobilizing the engagement of the public, particularly young fellows to tackle the challenges of marine plastic debate through innovation. The initiative also aligns very well with the objective of the ASEAN Norway Cooperation Project and resonates with ASEAN agenda and commitment reflected in the Bangkok Declaration on Combating Marine Debris in ASEAN region and the ASEAN Framework of Action on Marine Debris, where multi stakeholders, including youth, public, and private sector, as well as government agency, are to be engaged in advoca uh, advocacy program and outreach activities. Furthermore, it also contributes to the implementing of ASEAN Reason and Action Plan on combating marine debris in ASEAN member states, which were recently launched in May 2021, particularly in the areas of research and innovation, capacity building, public awareness, education, and outreach. I would like to thank the judges and hope that with the expert assessment and insight on practical measurements, uh, measures and best practices, we can zoom in innovative ideas and alternative solutions to bring about transformation and ways and means to address these marine plastic transboundary issues. To the finalists, it is my pleasure to extend my heartfelt congratulations to each one of you for making it to the final round. I hope that regardless of the final result, 
we can contribute to supporting the improvement of ASEAN action on plastics. By participating in the challenge, you have demonstrated the spirit of one ASEAN, a responsible community in the global community. I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Kian. Excellency, judges, and all finalists, I would like to inform you that the ASEAN Youth Social Innovation Challenge was participated by 79 social business proposal from ASEAN countries. The 79 proposal were sorted become 10 proposal by panel reviewers, and the best 10 proposal was get a training before they submitted their scale up business proposal for the final round. And from 10 proposal, there will be one proposal that will win this competition and get seed funding of 10,000 US dollar for scale up their business. And before uh, we move to the presentation session, this is our top, ton, uh, top, ten, uh, top 10 finalists. There is Vietnam, Indonesia, Cambodia, Brunei Darussalam, and Philippines. Next. Next, okay. And this is uh, our uh, judge for today's event. There is uh, Mr. Arisman, Executive Director of Center for Southeast Asian Studies. Dr. Yang Mei Eng, Executive Director at ASEAN Foundation. Uh, next, uh, Dr. Valentina Tartu from uh, Norwegian Institute for Water Research. Mr. Andre from Systemic. Mr. Herman from Action Coach. Next. Dr. Mubarik Ahmad, Country Director of CSF Indonesia. And Mrs. Mariko. Uh, Asmara from Chairman of GAC Recruitment Indonesia and COO at ANGO uh, Ventures. Next. Okay, and there is uh, Ms. Maya Tamimi from Unilever Indonesia. Next. And Mr. Thomas and Thomas, to, uh, sorry, Mr. Thomas from ASEAN CSR Network. Next. And before uh, we move our start, our event, so this is uh, the ground rules uh, for today's uh, final round. First, participants will present their proposal in five minutes maximum. So please just straight to your point and finish on time because after five minutes, your slides will be off. Second, each finalist will have two questions from two judges to make sure all judges have the same opportunity to ask. For the first question, I will invite one judge to ask. And for the second say, uh, question, it is open for any of judge by utilizing the raise hand feature in the Zoom. Then I will choose it. And third, the finalists have around three minutes to answer the questions. Fourth, after all finalists present and answer the questions, we will announce the winner of the ASEAN Youth Social Innovation Challenge. And the result of the competition is final without any objection. To respect intellectual property rights, CSIS is committed to maintaining the confidentiality of a submitted proposal and all only used for the selection process and uh, will not uh, provide access to any parties and will not be expected to provide interest outside this event. Okay, next. Yeah, this is the rundown or the agenda of uh, today's final round. Yeah, next. Okay, I think uh, that's all. And uh, without uh, any further ado, I would like to start uh, our uh, today's event by uh, present uh, the all finalists can present their um, their proposal and first uh, for the first uh, finalist I would like to call a uh, green joy team uh, please uh, for a green joy team uh, you can start to present and committee please uh, ask for unmute from green joy thank you For Greenjoy, please unmute yourself. Yes, I try to unmute. So can you hear me now? 
yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. So I will yeah, start my video. Okay. Mm. Hi, everybody. I'm Nguyen Võ, founder and CEO of GreenJoy. I would like to share with you a short video clip that's really smooth my heart. And I think everybody will have the same feeling with me. The next slide. Uh, click it, click it. Hello, so in this case, can we say my screen in case of the admin to do this? Hello? Nitty, please. Uh, can I ask in this case, can I say my screen in case of the admin or the people to do this? Uh, sorry, maybe our team will, the one will share the presentation. Yes, but maybe I think that this will a bit take time for my, okay, yes, I will talk. There's an object stuck inside a sea turtle. Can you imagine? A plastic straw. It makes our life easier and comfortable, but what will happen after we use the straw? The next slide, please. Next slide. Ken? Uh, the blood straw is the top dense fire in the ocean just and every year. One million of seabirds and one thousand of marine life are die from ingesting this type of the blood test. And sooner or later, the micro blood test will be in our daily meal as well. It's time for us to say no to blood test straw. Next one. At Green Chai, we have the solution. This is the Labyronia grass, which is the best alternative to blood test straw. Can you click on that? Yes, click net net for the video, please. Yeah, we find the solution from the nature. The Labyronia grass already exists in Vietnam 100 years ago. The farmer used to do the handmade craft. Now they can use material to do the innovative product like the grass store. This is biodegradable and saturated in the environment. Our solution can help to reduce the practice rate and pollution, improve the livelihood for the local people and the head and operator to achieve their sustainable goal. Hello, can you move to another slide, please? Uh, yes, we have the main product in the grass straw and other utensils from the grass straw Labyronia, which can replace the single use blood test. Next one. The next one, please. The next. Yes. Uh, there are so many alternatives to the plastic straw. We had the paper, the rice, or the bamboo. But compared to them, our the grass straw is the more, most benefits is that we had the plenty of supply. We get the food safety certificate. Our production is medium the carbon emissions and our automation. Um, the grass straw have the long duration in liquid compared to all the paper or the rice straw. It just only one hour. The next slide. Uh, this is an enormous market opportunity for the grass straw because single use blood is already banned in some country in the US, Europe, and Asia. Compared to the US, 500 million of the straw were used by day uh, in the Europe with a 25.3 billion of the straw per year. So we can calculate the total addressable market of 2.5 billion, and Green Joy can get the SOM of 35 million US dollar. And this is larger 30 times our current capacity. Uh, this is just 30 6 million straw per year and to meet such high demand we are now planning to optimize the cost and automate our process next Uh, how can we earn revenue? We sell directly to the B2B Horeca customer. This is hotel, restaurant, cafe for 10%. And then 90% we sell to the wholesale and the distributor for all a small market. The channels is from the offline and the online channel uh, via the, our website, Facebook, fan page, the e-commerce platform as well. Next slide. 
Yeah, so what Green Choice achieved so far for the operation, we saw 30 million stores and available in 500 B2B hotel, restaurant, cafe in Vietnam. Our store is also available in 30 countries in the Europe, US, and Asia, and about the financial. Uh, we already get the profit and the revenue is split 90 to the wholesale and 10 to the retail. Some of our big customers like the Intercontinental, Zui Marriott, and Hyundai Green Food. Next. Uh, yes, I'm Nguyen Võ, founder and CEO of Thảo e Business Development and Finance, and Tung e Technology and Engineering. We have the skill, experience, and the passion to bring success for Green Choice to become the top one grass straw supplier in Vietnam and the world. Next one. Yeah, our financial plan will be uh, based on the number of the store we sell uh, from for the retail and the wholesale. After the five years, we sell three billion, billion of store and generating 35 million US dollars. Yes. Together with the benefits, our core business values is always aligned with the sustainable development goal, responsible consumption and production. This is 100% from our natural grass straw. We avoid the use of the plastic straw to keep the ocean clean with light below water gone. And we also improve the livelihoods for the job and the decent economic growth for the Mekong Delta regions. Next. Uh, with our alternative uh, of the grass straw, we can replay for the plastic smart every year from 18,000 kilograms to 1.8 kilograms of the plastic smart. Next. Next. Next, please. Yes, uh, now we are working with the farmer to supply the grass technology lab university for the automation as well as the startup network and the NGO or the government. Uh, Green Choice Star also gets some work and rec recognition and the recently we got uh, the prize or the grants from the UNDP for the ending plastic pollution one minute, challenge. One minute left. Yes. Next, please. Next slide, please. Yes, our five-year timeline is that we will start uh, focus on our main product, this is a grass store. Then we will do the full automation and the production line. Uh, the next one is we will expand our distribution channel and marketing exposure. Then we can enlarge small product beside the store. This is the cup uh, or the box that can replay the single year practice. Next slide. Yes, so uh, we are seeking the fund and uh, as well as for this competition to scale up our, uh, our process as well as the material, the marketing and the manpower as well. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, most of now we are for, for, the, for the fundings, we will perform automation and scale up, uh, secure our material, marketing and brand exposure. Next slide, please. Uh, a healthy star will create a healthy planet. A healthy planet will turn into healthy profit. We invite you to join Green Joy Mission to replay 3 billion of the straw and make our work greener and better. Thank you. Okay, thank you uh, from Green Joy. I would like to invite Miss Mariko Asmara Yoshihara uh, for raising a question to the finalists, please. Miss Mariko, you still muted? Uh, Miss Mariko? Yeah. Thank you for the presentation. Hello, hi. Can, how can I call you? Uh, yes, you can call me Nguyen. Nguyen, Nguyen. okay, yes. Nguyen. Th hi, uh, thank you so much. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Uh, if I may know, is a... Uh, um, how do you find uh, the uh, what do you call it, the impact that you have been uh, been uh, uh, done so far uh, uh, from uh, before that actually that uh, 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 people using your product and mm -hmm. uh, how that actually that the real impact that it's actually that being uh, shown after that actually they've been utilized it because I uh, because fortunately I'm actually in this business as well I'm, I'm having a few startups that are actually doing the same thing as well 
um, I uh, we keep like uh, giving or giving the idea to many restaurants and many uh, other places. Uh, they feel cool and good in the beginning, but in the middle of the, mm-hmm. the process, because they need to actually to uh, to educate the customers. Uh, sometimes they don't uh, extend or they don't uh, 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 give a repeating order at the end of the day. So in the beginning, it's, uh, they really want to contribute and they really want to participate into this kind of, a, um, how to say, it, like a campaign, lah, let's say, okay? But, uh, but because they have to also educate the customers, they, uh, they, they got quite a lot of challenges. Uh, I'm not too sure about the straw, the your your product, your straw product. Usually, if it is the straw coming from rice, coming from many uh, any others, actually the life shelf of the straw is very small. Yeah, it's very mid, uh, mid, uh, limited. It's not like plastic. You can actually you can put into the water and then just forever, right? But it's just like my straw is actually only long last for uh, for ten minutes and then they 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 go. Uh, in, in the different uh, what do you call it like uh, uh, I mean it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't look good at the end of the day. So then Nguyen, do you mind to actually to help me to understand how that actually that uh, the, uh, how that it works in in your product? Uh, yes, thank you for your comment. Yeah, uh, you just Nguyen? yes. Sorry, maybe. Uh... Hello. Yes, I'm here. Just to have a question also. Uh, you can answer. Oh, yeah, yes. Granger, I will answer. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, uh, Miss Mariko, for your comments and the question. Our product is made from 100% natural, and we have the competitive advantage compared to the rice straw or the paper straw. Is that the papers or the rice straw, they are just used in around 10 minutes and easy slightly. Yes, but our product, the rice straw, it can be kept in very long time. This is almost in one day and never wow. change the start, never change the material. And oh. our customer in the Europe and the US, I really, really like it. And uh, look like Green Choice were established in two years ago, but now more than 90% is the customer they are brought to us because uh, the single use practice only the bench in the Europe, uh, US and some country in the Asia. So they will find the alternative to the practice store. So when, um, they try to we send to them the sample and then they order to us at mm. immediately and now we had a frequent orders every month from every customer in the 30 country and beside the store is our main product we also on the IND to do small some of the product made from the grass paper look like some from the coaster yeah for the F&D operator too and we have the cup handlers and we're on the way to do like the poles and the box in the near future so mm. this is very potential for us Yes, and uh, we um, the demand is 30 times our current capacity. Shows that why we want to scale up as fast as possible to meet the high demand of the world. Mm. Okay, wow. Okay, Go- uh, gorgeous. Uh, one day that that is a uh, that is excellent. Okay, good. Thank you very much, Nguyen, and good luck for you. Yeah, thank you, Mariko. Thank you, Nguyen from Gary Joy and Mariko. Uh, next, I would like to invite uh, the team uh, from Happy, Sci- Happy Circle, please, or Happy Circle. The floor is yours. Okay, uh, good morning, uh, good, sorry, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Nur Haima. Uh, let me inter- uh, let me uh, present the scale up uh, plan of Happy Circle project. Uh, next slide. As we all know, in Indonesia, is yearly we dispose about six million tons of plastic waste, and nine point seven tons of plastic or 3.2 million sachet are sachet waste from three must-have home care products. Uh, they are dispose liquid, detergent, and then floor cleaner. Next slide. Next, please. 
for the problem of combating the plastic waste in Indonesia, there are mainly three uh, types of uh, existing solution. They are reduced, recycle, and alter alternative materials. But they uh, usually have some issues that carry on with those uh, of the so of each solution. The first one for reduced solution. Uh, it's not only a small uh, pro proportion of market, it's also time consuming, limit customers to buy certain packaging only for certain product variant and high investment in the refill equipment, equipment, especially the sophisticated one. This creates limitation for scaling uh, the access uh, of the project. Uh, second is recycle. It has an issue. It is exhaustive and expensive from the, the process, it came from collection and then separation, cleaning, shredding, melting, and remolding. It, it is uh, exhaustive and expensive in the process. The third uh, existing solution is alternative materials, but it also ha has some issues. The first is generally more expensive than a plastic. And the second, it can be used only on certain products due to durability issues and potential risk of associating product materials. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, we are, Happy Circle, have uh, the solution uh, with some of the benefit uh, that we serve to our customer. First, we, you, we are provide reusable packaging system. The customer easily to swap packaging. The customer also easy to buy and sell packaging to us through our network of resellers and locations. We handle the collection on the cleaning of the packaging. So uh, our customers uh, do not need to clean uh, the packaging themselves. We are also having uh, omni-channel shopping. The first customer buy, a uh, customer can buy product in various channels, for example, WhatsApp, and then we have also website and from our resellers. So we, we are also have the various fulfillment options such as in-store direct buying, order pickup at strategic location or home or office delivery. We also support our resellers and partner store location with application that provided by Happy Circle. Next slide, please. Uh, next, please. Okay. Uh, the Happy Circle also provides our product in reasonable price. We manage the pricing at as par or slightly lower than competitors in the same product class. We maintain our pricing strategy to be as par or slightly lower than competitors to, in to incentivize the customer who order product in reusable packaging at Happy Circle. We also provide the loyalty program the reward point for every gram of plastic packaging uh, reduction can uh, be can be get by our customers. Uh, we all also have the loyal system uh, loyalty system with digital membership program through reseller application. So uh, it, we want to attract our resellers to join with Happy Circle. Sorry, you have one minute left. Yes. Next, please. Next, please. Uh, this is uh, the solution of Happy Circle. Uh, the uh, the picture is about the process of that we would like to deliver. Next. We yeah, have uh, our market is have the time of 42 billion. The same is uh, 3 billion and some is 30 million. Next. But we, there is uh, some obstacle of our in our development. The first, we are experiencing the bottleneck in product development and product registration. We also need to have our own plastic mold for five home care chemical product because uh, to make it uh, easily to be to get to make it easily clean. And we also need the fund to expand our business mainly for product and packaging cleaning facilities. Uh, now we are currently operate in Surabaya and we will expand our business in Jakarta, Lombok, and uh, Yogyakarta. Next. Okay, sorry, your time is up. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you from Happy Circle. Uh, I would like to invite Dr. Yang Mei Eng to give a question to the finalists, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Happy Sakala, uh, Nor Halina, uh, for your presentations. Uh. Uh, I just want to, uh, because I'm quite concerned over your business model, is uh, you have you are using a lot of human uh, resources, uh, physical resources, uh, because you have pick up and all that. So during this pandemic time, uh, how are you going to implement your plan? You know, when there is a restrictions and um, uh, uh, movements and all that, you know. So you seems to be uh, using the uh, water, uh, same similar system uh, with water gallon or LPG cylinder. Yeah? So uh, uh, this kind of system uh, will be more require more human uh, resources and physical resources as well. And then secondly is uh, my question is uh, you are targeting a low income yeah, families. Yeah? So uh, this kind of awareness usually, uh, I think it also appeal to high income people, you know, and then uh, also medium income because uh, people are more aware on how to, uh, uh, you know, environmental friendly, you know, how to take care of the environment in, instead of the low income family because uh, they usually priorities are to save money for this kind of uh, low income. Huh? So for them is to, uh, trade in and uh, implement eco-friendly lifestyle sometimes, it can be quite challenging. So uh, what is your plan, you know, to actually handle this kind of uh, issues for your business plan? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Young, for uh, your question. Uh, for to, to, uh, to make it our business is uh, can be run uh, in, the, in the middle of pandemic, we are make a partnership for logistic and warehouse. We have uh, resellers, we have also uh, partner with uh, strategic location and the warehouses. So it will uh, reduce the movement of the people. Uh, our customer also can order our product uh, by using application. So they don't need to meet uh, the people directly. And then they can set uh, the time that they want uh, or when they want to pick up the uh, empty the empty packaging or when they want to drop uh, our products. So they, uh, it's actually limit, limiting the, uh, how uh, one another mix each other, uh, how Happy Circle meets our customers. Uh, and then uh, the second one, uh, we don't, we do not, uh, we actually do not only targeting in low income, we also targeting in, uh, in the medium and high income. Uh, and now currently in Surabaya, we are already serving them. So most uh, actually, um, there is so uh, most of our customer is from mid, uh, middle and high income. Thank you, Mrs. Yang. Okay, thank you. Next, uh, I would like to uh, invite Domneto from Domneto Eco, please. Where is yours? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So you can tell me when I can start. I cannot see the screen yet. Okay, so I can start now, right? Yes, please. Okay, so uh, greeting judges and uh, everyone. So we are from the Natu Eco, a startup based in Cambodia who promotes sustainable living and reducing single use plastics. So today we are going to present our scale up plan. So the most important element in a scale up plan is the context. And with, next slide please. Next. Uh, next, yes. So in order to proceed with our journey to a zero waste future, it's very important for us to recognize the opportunity in the plastic ecosystem of Cambodia. Next. So by observing and with our market research of the plastic ecosystem in Cambodia, we can see that there are many gaps in Cambodia that people do not pay much attention toward reducing single use plastic. And the sustainable living concept in Cambodia is not famous at all. That is why the Natu Eco is initiated. Next. So the Natu Eco, next, next. The Natu Eco means a journey to sustainable consumption. And with next, okay. So with one year and a half of our operation, we reach out the awareness to more than 200,000 people and we achieve 11.22 
2,000 followers on social media. And by that time, we launched three product lines already. And within the product lines, we sold more than 5,000 items to more than 3,000 uh, customers. And we are able to partner with big and small corporations who share the same vision in reducing single-use plastic in Cambodia. Next. So your question might be, are we ready to scale up? So in order to answer that question, let's look at our SWOT analysis next. So currently in Cambodia, we are on the top of the market. There's none of their sustainable company that have achieved this milestone so far, since we have a young potential and creative team with the local approach and introducing the affordable and acceptable solution. Next, however, we also have some lack of financial capabilities, experience and network since we are a startup and our short time of operation. Next. So aside from those weakness, we also can see the opportunity that there are more people paying attention towards sustainable living in Cambodia because that is based on our customer behavior data. And with the side effect of COVID-19, people refuse to use the single use product in order to maintain their personal hygiene. However, there are also a rise of competition in Cambodia many people try to replicate our business. And with the side effect of COVID-19, again, people might find our product unnecessary. And next, next please. We also have to remind ourselves with the value, vision, and our mission, and combining the SWOT analysis of our current situation and our value, vision, and mission, we can say that we are more than ready to scale up and it is a must for us to scale up. And the question right now is that how will we scale up next? Next. So we will present our scale up plan in three different phases. Next. So in phase one, we name it, um, um, phase one is a 12 month plan. So we name it the product development. The goal here is that we enforce our financial capabilities in order to do our product development. The first uh, category is the individual product, a product that can be purchased by individual to reduce single-use plastic. And it contains the milk fabric clothing line that we have been doing our research on and all the materials like the coffee cup and mug. Next. Next. Next, please. Moreover, there, are also, there is also corporate products as well. It's a product that can be, put, be purchased in bulk to other corporates who aim to reduce single-use plastic. And we sold our product to Grab Cambodia as well uh, already, and that is one of our revenue stream. That is the end, the end of uh, our phase one goal. And the second phase, next. The second phase, we call it partnership and contribution. It's time for us to give back after we build a strong foundation of our business. So the goal here is that we are going to partner with uh, F&B business in Cambodia and also the NGO to organize some campaign and events to benefit our customers. Next. Sorry, you have four minutes left. Next. So after we build the partnership, the network, the experience, and the foundation of our business, it's time for us to implement the application of them now. It's called the now mobile application. It's a bridge between the customer and the food and beverage company in Cambodia. And if we can achieve it, we would be the first one ever in Cambodia to make something beneficial for customer to reduce single use plastic. And it can enhance people to reduce single use plastic dramatically. Next, so you might question, how will our mobile application work? So customer have a chance to uh, get their incentive from the mobile application from the F&B partner that are our partner and the F&B partner able to gain that green branding image and at the same time they get customer uh, target, the new customer target. And for them now we will use it as our customer relationship management platform. Next. So really your time is Okay, it's okay, yeah. Okay. Thank you, that, that is all, time is up, thank you. Okay, for me too. Thank you. Stop this um, yeah. uh, congratulations. Yeah. You good. Hello, Thomas. Hello. Okay. Uh, uh, I just want to start by congratulating uh, you because. Mr. Thomas. Sorry. Uh, can I start? All right. Yeah. With five hundred dollars, you and a three-year target, you missed. You achieved it in fifteen months. So I congratulate you for your past achievements. Um, I, I have got more than one question, but I think I will just, for time's sake, ask you the first question first. If you had got this $10,000 price money, how will you use the money? 
Um, thank you, Thomas. So uh, with that question, actually, we have it uh, planned in our slide, but it's in the appendix part. So I'm going to present it to you shortly. So with the $10,000, the main thing that we are going to invest in is in our phase one. The phase one is the product development phase and also into our internal development phase. It based on our report. So in the product development phase, I presented to you earlier, but in the internal development phase, we will invest some more money into the marketing, the digital marketing, and also the packaging of our products to make it more reach approachable to the customer. So your question is, is very good. Based on our financial uh, in, uh, forecast, we can see that we can break even point in our phase one by after a brawl, which means that it's 2020, uh, after abroad, yes. And, and if uh, you take a look into this, we have one quote that we all remember as a Domnatu Eco is that Rome is it's not built in a day and plastic cannot be reduced overnight. But if we take the initiative as what Domnatu have already done, we, it is our right time to take the first step and we took the first step already. So it is the time for us to move forward and reduce the plastic in Cambodia step by step and make Cambodia a model for sustainable living in the future. I think I answered your question. Thank you. Um, can I do the follow up and say, um, you are now having three products. Yes, sir. Your new products, are they related because you talked about clothing, but are they, uh, how does it add on to your business? Because you're doing much more in scale up. Huh? Are you building on it or are you going to a new line? Um, actually, uh clothing line, it's one of the, the topic that we are doing the research because we observe that there's a trend in Cambodia right now that there are a rise of people aiming toward the fashion industry. But at the same time, we are not trying to switch the line from the food and beverage line because if you observe the line of our products, it is in the food and beverage industry, which means that it contains the single use, uh, replace the single use straw, the single use utensils, the single use lunch box, and the single use um, um, coffee cup holder. So we are not trying to switch the line, but based on the current market trend in Cambodia, we decided to invest some more time and effort into the research of the clothing line because we can see that clothing is somehow an important concept in Cambodia and if we can make something sustainable for it it would be very beneficial yes thanks uh, thanks a lot I just had one concern that uh, Cambodia manufactures a lot of clothes and um, uh, why do you want to start from zero and uh, use your partnership model to help get the marketing and the ID r d done by other people? Uh, with you. That's uh, the only question I, the only concern I had. That's the only, thanks. But yeah, I yeah. must compliment you for a good very idea. good presentation. Yes. And, uh, that's a very good idea, Thomas. Uh, we will take that into our consideration. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next, I would like to invite uh, the team from Octopus Circular, Circular Pool for Octopus. Please, time is yours. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I'm Musawi Mukhtar. You can call me Awi. I'm representing Octopus Indonesia, a complete circular economy solutions. Next slide. So, as we are all know, that Indonesia stands at the crossroad of a waste crisis as we are generating over 175,000 tons of waste per day, and about 24% of them are recyclables. And if we, if, we, if we are trying to see the market values of the post-consumer product or recycling uh, packaging, it's about 42.2 billion US dollars. And the Extended Producer Responsibility or EPR and Circular Economy Initiative also will create demands for data trading services for post-consumer packaging or product. Next. Next slide. Okay, uh, also the, uh, the informality of process challenges in recycle. In Indonesia itself, currently 81% of waste is in, in Indonesia is unsorted, making it difficult to recycle, of course. And according to the latest uh, research and uh, data, there are no basic, uh, basic knowledge of doing recycling. And only 10% of Indonesians didn't know the basic knowledge of recycling. And of course, waste is not only an environmental problem, it also causing social problems. And 
the multiple layers of recycling actors in, in collections processes causes in efficiencies uh, process. Next slide. So you guys can uh, see uh, the upside of the slides. Uh, uh, this is like the conventional one, uh, the traditional uh, processes of recycling. So um, at the left, at the left side, there were uh, uh, there are waste collectors that uh, it could be an independent waste pickers or daily workers or um, pemulung or you name it. And then they sell it to the small uh, middleman, big middleman, big bosses, and then uh, several uh, actors who, uh, who who involved in this uh, value chains until they uh, sell it to the uh, recycling industries. And then octopus simplifies, uh, we are trying to simplify processes without sacrificing uh, any actors that already involved uh, in the industry. So uh, we are trying to make, um, uh, to make this uh, as simple as possible. And then uh, uh, we define it as uh, waste generators and then goes to Palastari or waste pickers and then they sell it to the collections point and then they sell it to the collection center and then, then they sell it to the industrial uh, recycling. Next. So here, the circular economy that we are uh, trying to uh, propose, a platform that helps producers uh, to track and collect their post-consumer packaging, whether it's recyclables on, uh, or non-recyclable. So as, as you guys see, we're dividing to three stakeholders right here. There are, uh, uh, first, uh, first of all, is the plus study or the waste pickers, and then the collections point, and the third one is users or uh, the brand consumers. Next. Next slide. So here, so here we provide a mobile three mobile apps for uh, our key stakeholders. First is a brand consumer or user app, and the second is Polastari app or the waste paper applications, and the third one collections point app. And we also have one uh, real data uh, that data dashboard to provide the MC, FMCG brands or uh, brands uh, to collect and. Uh, for, for the data to uh, traceability uh, their uh, their uh, post uh, product consumer packaging next so we also have a uh, program hijau here so the program hijau here uh, we, we give the chance to local merchants or um, uh, you know like local stores to advertise their product or services in our platform and then we uh, we give direct marketing to sales uh, conversions for merchants because we use program hijau to uh, feature uh, premium merchants in our homepage, and then uh, this uh, uh, this uh, the purpose of the program hijau is user point redemption. So, so the user who uh, dispose their uh, trash or recyclables, and then uh, uh, the plus star will pick it up, and then they can will uh, the user will get the point, and they, they can redeem uh, their points into uh, some vouchers in our app. Next. Sorry, you have one. Okay. Next, next slide, please. So here, the advantage of uh, Octopus DR us uh, that already proven in emerging countries to uh, for increasing recycling rate. Next. So, so here, uh, how does it work for brand? Uh, we set the target, set the budget, and track fulfillment. Next, please. Come on. Uh, this is one of the examples of consumer data dashboard for brands or FMCG industry. Next. Can you guys make it faster, please? So here uh, with Octopus Circular Plastic, uh, here are some of the EPR target that uh, we make it easy as it can be for the FMCG brands. Next. Okay, our octopus broader impact to advance SDGs agendas. Of course, we're saving the environment because we already uh, prevent ocean plastic. As per today, we already collect 8.9 million pieces of plastics. And also one of the unique fact because uh, our collections process is using method that provide access for women to get involved in our, directly in our ecosystem. We have 43% uh, of women taking a part as a polystyrene or waste speakers and uh, also collections point. Next. Sorry, your time is up. Okay. Thank you, Octopus. Um, Committee, we can stop. Yeah.
Okay, uh, I would like to invite uh, Miss. Uh, sorry, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Herman Susanto. Mr. Herman Susanto, uh, question. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, that's a great presentation. Uh, what are your some of your customers say about uh, what you have done? Okay. And then I have the, I have the second question is, uh, what is your priority this year? Sorry, can you, excuse me, can you repeat the second question? What are your priorities this year? Okay, thank you for uh, the questions. Uh, the first question is that, um, uh, as, as per today, we already uh, got, um, we, we already touched uh, seven, over 70,000 users in uh, in the uh, big cities in Indonesia, including Makassar, Bali, and uh, West Java, and and what our users uh, uh, says about uh, about us, they already um, uh, they uh, they already happy and uh, they they felt like they uh, there's uh, this is a platform that uh, that uh, this type that they need because uh, you know like. Um, uh, they, they don't need to uh, bring their waste or recyclables or uh, non-recyclables to the web, a local nearest West Bank. Instead, uh, there were uh, plastari or uh, waste pickers uh, come to their home to pick it up, and also they they can get point for uh, from what they dispose. So it, it's it's very win-win solutions because also uh, we attract some local merchants to uh, in our ecosystem. So. Uh, so we're trying to make this um, as sustainable uh, as it can be, and to make this um, uh, cir uh, circular uh, to to maintain the circularity, uh, the economy circularity in our ecosystem. So uh, and also uh, per uh, two months ago, a couple months ago, we already uh, picked the pampers uh, in uh, the pampers in uh, in West Java. So uh, so the the mothers or the households. Uh, uh, not worry about you using uh, uh, single the single use pampers because because they can uh, uh, they uh, they can dispose to our platform and then uh, we and then also we make sure that every trash or every recyclables materials even uh, even though it's plastic we can uh, we 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 uh, we send it to the recycling industries and uh, to make it um, uh, to make it bottles for the bottles and to make it um, uh, some kind of paving or or uh, materials for uh, the pampers so uh, they're really happy. And about the second questions, um, uh, about the second question, um, our our big priority this year is that uh, we want to expand our uh, product and services in. Uh, in 20 in over 26 uh, cities in in uh, in West Java as we are doing partnership with uh, the governor the governor of uh, West Java uh, uh, Mr. Ridwan Kamil and uh, and also we want to uh, make our uh, second B2B pickup services this year because uh, because all this time we, we only use our service as a retail uh, from uh, so uh, from the household uh, and then uh, the uh, the plus time we'll pick it up and then uh, because we we can we cannot accommodate uh, from uh, the hotels, our restaurants, and cafe because they have a huge amount of waste or uh, recyclables. So we wanna um, uh, make our B two B pickup services this year, uh, so to make it uh, to making it easy for hotels, restaurants, and for cafe or offices to onboard themselves. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, maybe Ms. Arisma, uh, do you have any question to Octopus? You still mute? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, Octopus, uh, I'm just uh, wondering uh, what is the most important reason uh, your firm have a competitive advantage uh, under other uh, competitors because I believe there is many initiative like application like this to bridge uh, between the informal okay. sector and uh, industry. So, what is the differentiation of your product compared okay. to other competitor? Okay, thank you for uh, your questions. Very great questions. Um, uh, I'm happy to answer it. Okay, first of all, uh, one of our competitive advantage among others initiative that are currently existing in Indonesia, of course, because uh, first of all, we we are using pieces instead of kilogram. 
uh, because many other initiatives in Indonesia they are using a uh, kilogram, uh, not uh, not per piece. So with the uh, with 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 uh, because we are using per piece, we are easily track uh, every single pieces of plastics or uh, from any specific brands or any particular brands. And uh, so uh, so we are so we also put uh, uh, doing partnership with some FMCG brands. Uh, who, who have like specific request to collect uh, certain materials or uh, certain uh, 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 PCPs for uh, post-consumer product packaging, so uh, they could easily track it. Uh, and also uh, because we are using uh, PCs, uh, so the users uh, the users could easily uh, like call Polestari or Waste Speaker to uh, come to their home or uh, places or offices or uh, wherever they uh, they are in. So it, uh, they just need to collect like 10 pieces of plastics or whatever uh, the type of plastic is. It could be combinations between uh, glass, uh, plastic glasses or bottles or, uh, or HDPE uh, plastics. They could, uh, they only need to collect 10 pieces and then by that by uh, that ten pieces, they can uh, easily call Polestari without waiting until like uh, the waste got bulky and then make it uh, uh, their um, make it them lazy to call uh, like uh, such kind of uh, waste people. So so that one of our competitive advantage uh, um, uh, amongst other initiatives that currently exist in Indonesia. And the second is because we are uh, we already have exclusive contracts as well uh, with one of uh, the recycle uh, the biggest recycling. Uh, uh, the, the biggest recycling uh, industries uh, in Southeast Asia, so uh, we can we can uh, get uh, the users and uh, we can uh, give our Polestari the better incentive uh, among others uh, initiative because uh, uh, we we uh, apa, we, uh, we partnership directly with the uh, RPT uh, recycling industries in uh, Southeast Asia. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Next, uh, I would like to invite uh, the team uh, Kios, uh, please. Uh, Kios, and is yours. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Please. Okay, um, dear judges and dear uh, panelists, uh, please introduce. My name is Fazrin. Uh, I'm from Kios, and Kios is here to help you transition into sustainable lifestyle through Gravel. Next. I think uh, everyone here understands that uh, plastic waste uh, in Indonesia and in Southeast Asia uh, creates a lot of problems. In Jakarta alone, we produce more than 2,000 tons of plastic waste in daily basis. It is very harmful, space consuming, very costly, and only 12% of it gets to be recycled. Uh, I think it is important for us to transition into something, into a model that are more sustainable and circular. Next. Hence, Kios. Uh, so Kios itself, uh, is a raffle as a service solution, helping FMCG turning daily daily product into refillables. Right now, we serve uh, home care and personal care product such as soaps through our systems. Next. So what makes us different than the other refill solutions, especially here in Indonesia, is that our model are FMCG approved we have tech that are approved by the FMCG in other part of the world, which ensures a lot a high quality safety of the product and standard of operations. We are also having IoT and mobile apps integrated with our system for the customers to track their consumption, impact, and rewards. We also have smart packaging for our traceability. Next. So this is our business model. Uh, this is our revenue chart. Our uh, closeness and partnership with FMCG allows us to access a 50% discount on COGS that we sell, on products that we sell. And we sell this product through dealers uh, that open our uh, machine within their shops or their space and get 25% of margin from every liter sold. Next. 
Uh, this model allows us to expand uh, bigger and faster, especially here in Indonesia, because uh, the partnership with FMCG allows us to access different kind of brands, uh, expand our product options, and also our dealership models allows us to expand geographically to reach our customers to be as close as possible to their home so it is convenient for them. Right now, we have more than 200 dealers inquiries. We have five FMCGs locally and internationally in talks with us uh, to have their brands uh, to be available to our system. Next. So this is our customers. Kiosk itself aims to be very inclusive. But right now, what we learned from our pilot one year in Indonesia, in Jakarta, uh, we got that uh, our exact segment right now, mostly are uh, sustainable shopper, and also people that are looking for uh, savings and convenience. Uh, from this segment, we have learned that in the next five years, we can target 2 million of them, 2 million of households through our models. Next. Our learning also from our pilots is that we have unlocked ways to incentivize people to return for our billings, which in terms help us uh, save plastic waste from being created for up to 1800. Next. What is next for us? We plan to open in more than 50 vending points, which most of these uh, will comprise of uh, vending points leased by the FMCGs uh, with three FMCG actually. And we will open three product categories and also pilots in locations uh, that are retails and uh, supermarket chains. Next. Hello, next. Sorry, your pen is only one minute uh -huh. left. Please next. Okay. Yeah, so uh, this is a kiosk team. Uh, we are comprised of uh, three people, very compassionate on solving the plastic waste. We are part of MDU, a startup studio based in Netherlands, focusing on environmental and social issues. Next. Uh, I hope this opportunity of pitching to judges and our panels uh, will open doors to collaboration to come with Kiosk for us to realize a refill solution in Asia and in Indonesia specifically. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kiosk. Uh, I would like to invite Ms. Mariko As Mara Yoshihara. Do you have a question to finalists? Are you still muted? Oh, thank you uh, for the opportunity. Thank you for the uh, presentation. It was a very wonderful presentation. Thank you, Fazerin. Uh, do you mind to actually to tell me again who's actually your stakeholders? How to actually to make, uh, I mean, I just want to know like how that actually that you, let's say if you want to actually to go bigger 10 times than now uh, from mm -hmm. the current situation, mm -hmm. who's actually the key factor of your success? If you want to go big 10 times, are you actually go yeah. to the manufacturing or you go to where? where you, may I know how, yeah. that, uh, uh, yeah, how that actually it works? Yeah, so uh, at the moment, uh, we have this leasing model uh, because we provide the machine uh, as a lease service to the FMCGs. Uh, but that, that is only a short-term model that we approach uh, for us to be able to learn a lot about uh, the operational model, the quality standard. Um, but what we plan next, um, just like illustrated in our uh, pie chart, is that uh, we will get the product from the FMCG as low as 50% resell it through dealers, which will have our machines in their space for free because it is a company owned dealers operated kind of a sim. And uh, by that, um, through that strategy also, we can kind of like a uh, canvassing locations that are um, full of our uh, customer target profile, at least for now, the first adopters. Uh, but 
uh, eventually what we want is we want to open in a retail that are chain, which are, we, we are uh, in talks right now. Yeah. Mm. Okay. okay. So it will be like in supermarket okay. and mini market. Mm -hmm. Supermarket and mini market, yeah? That is how mm -hmm. that you are going to do, yeah? Yeah. Wish you good luck, okay? Thank you, Fazri. Thank well you. Well done. Thank you. Mr. Herman, do you have another question? Thank you. Well, uh, my question okay. is... The... Uh, next, I would like to invite Class Cycle. Oh, thank you, Mr. Herman. Tatna, Tatna. Mr. Herman, I would like to ask uh, question. Mr. Herman? Yeah. Yes. But, yeah, uh, my question is, uh, uh, why, how badly do you actually want to win and why? Uh, how bad we want to win? I think it is mostly driven by uh, the fact that the scale of the plastic problem, especially here in Indonesia, is so huge that uh, we work along with uh, even our competitors to share insights. So that's how bad we want to, to, to have the solution to be in the market. Uh, and I think, sorry, what is the second question? No, and why? Why do you want to? Why? Yeah. Uh, someone has to do it. I think that's that's the why is it you? The, um it's just for us to be in the right place in the right time. Uh we are part of a NPU zero waste living lab, um, which mostly focus on how we come up with solutions uh to plastic problem, but also for myself, um, it has been a personal journey in a sustainable sectors. Uh, I've been working for the UNDP before this, working for the sustainability as well. Um, so why me? I, I don't know. I can be replaceable, but the mission still has to, to be going. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next, uh, I would like to invite my cycle team to give a presentation. For my cycle team, time is yours. Um, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chang Tun Tiam, and I'll be the presenter from Plus Cycle. I'm very happy to see you all here today. I would like to present to you today about our social business, Plus Cycle. So, first off, what is Plus Cycle? And what do we do, and what do we provide? Well, Plus Cycle is a startup from Brunei Darussalam and who is a pioneer in plastic recycling in the country. So our vision is to have zero circulation of virgin plastic in Brunei by 2035. And our mission is to repurpose plastics, become the main distributor of alternative plastic and to introduce automatic vending machines for detergents, soaps and lotions. Next slide, please. All right, um, there is a huge problem with plastic in Brunei and we are very passionate about solving this issue. The fact that China stops importing plastic poses a huge issue in Brunei, as now there is nowhere to throw the plastic waste away except in the landfills. However, landfills in Brunei are expected to be full in less than 10 years time. And with 29% of the waste that we generate being plastic waste. The initiative that has been carried out to Reduced plastic waste has measured success due to lack of plastic alternatives, lack of affordable alternatives, and the lack of alternative plastic products to meet the different needs of businesses. Next slide, please. One of the examples that leads us to establish this business is that two of the most popular drink chains in Brunei, Coffee Bean and Gong Ta, had introduced paper straws as their initiative to no plastic campaign. However, customers has complained that the plastic straws became soggy really fast. So they returned back to using plastic straws as they are no better alternative. Therefore, Plus Cycle could step in and benefit from this issue by 
offering alternative products and profiting from it. Next slide, please. Plastic consumption in Brunei is high. So therefore the solution Plus Cycle provides is to collect and recycle used plastics as well as sell plastic alternative products. Next slide, please. Now, moving on to the traction of the business, how are we going to get traction for our business? Well, there are three strategies that we have put up to get traction for our business, which are no plastic straw days, joining in the government campaign, and to introduce bring your own container day for takeaway foods. Next slide, please. Turning to the market analysis, what's the market outlook for Plus Cycle? Well, based on ours and the government survey, we have identified five key points. Firstly, there is a rise in conscious spending amongst the youths in Brunei. Secondly, the increasing public awareness and the support for no plastic initiatives are high. Thirdly, Plus Cycle is the only company doing plastic recycling in Brunei. Fourth is that we have a strong economy rebound. And the fifth is that there are a huge number of businesses going green currently, and they can be our potential clients. Next slide, please. Now let's go on to the competition for Plus Cycle. Plus Cycle currently has no competition locally as there are no established recycling industry. Hence, we have an initial target for food and beverage chains as our potential clients as can be seen in the list. Next slide, please. Next, I would like to turn on to the revenue forecast of Plus Cycle. Based on the current market analysis, the pie chart shown is our three-year revenue forecast. We are building our businesses year on year, starting with the food and beverage industry, then moving on to the retail industry. Based on the revenue forecast, we are anticipating initial investment of 9,000 US dollars, which we are expecting a return of investment within two years. Next slide, please. Sorry, you have only one minute left. All right, thank you. Moving on to the Plus Cycle team, we are not alone in this and we have support from our university and student volunteers. Next slide, please. In conclusion, to summarize our business, Plus Cycle has a huge potential to grow as we are the pioneer in Brunei, so we can capture a huge selection of the market. The fact that now the awareness and support is high with a lot of environmentally conscious locals, the time is right for Plus Cycle to expand more. Brunei also has a good strong economic rebound and is predicted to continue in the pandemic and beyond. So to finish my business presentation, if our business has no investment with the fact that there's no recycling industry in Brunei, then who else would take the initiative to stop single-use plastics? Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Placycle. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Valentina Taktiu to give a question to the finalists. Yes, thank you very much for this uh, nice presentation. I was wondering what was the biggest challenge that Plus Cycle had to overcome so far? And if you already have some plans to partnership with some um, producers that are offering these alternative solutions that you are mentioning are currently lacking. Thank you. Oh, yes. Um, thank you. Um, with regarding to partnership, um, we will consider partnering up with the with a few of the competitors in this competition, mainly Greenjoy and Kios, as Greenjoy provides the plastic straws, while we can partner up with Kios and learn more about the refilling industry, with uh, how the refilling industry works. Um, sorry, um, can I, can you repeat the first question? Yeah, I was wondering what was the biggest challenge that you had to overcome because you are a pioneer in, in the business. So there are always challenges when uh, the road is not uh, ready, already ah. there. I see. Thank you. Um, one of the biggest challenge, I think, would be to shift the mindsets of um, the older generation towards the importance of um, going green as well as um, regarding the rules and regulations that will be set up regarding the um, recycling industry, which could, which some of the rules and regulations could be taken off from the current 
pre-existing oil and gas industries, such as the um, requirements for the recycling plants and so on, and also growing and expanding our um, recy recycling operations would be a huge challenge as the equipments that are required to upscale is very expensive. Um, that is all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And I see a raise hand from Dr. Mubarik Ahmad. For Dr. Mubarik Ahmad, please. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just have one question and directly related to the very last sentence you said about uh, uh, difficulties in getting, uh, uh, um, well, challenge in getting capital for, for doing more. Um, I was wondering because uh, uh, I've been wondering uh, in the first year, of course, uh, $10,000 maybe enough or $9,000 as you said, it, maybe enough to just buy the straw and try to campaign for the for using the the uh, the recycle, well, the, the natural nature based straw as an alternative to the plastics one. But uh, in the in your plan, in the second year, you talk about uh, the the uh, recyclable plastic, and there is no such industry at the moment. And I was I've been wondering how the capital, uh, how do you see the capital requirements for that, that uh, second or that expansions of business that you're imagining? And well, in a way, you have answered that, but I wonder if you have had some some perspective or calculations about the capital requirements. Uh, if you are to to get into the recycle uh, plastic industry, oh, um, thank you for the question. Um, the nine thousand US dollar uh, is actually to acquire the equipments that are needed to begin small scale recycling operations, and no. the remaining one thousand dollar would be used to acquire the plastic alternative products such as the grass straws mm. and the spoons and the bowls and etc. And then that's uh, the, the, the 9,000 is enough to, to, to start that type of business on the um, small scale? Uh, yes, it is enough to get the okay. starting equipment for recycling. Good, congratulations, good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mubarik. Uh, for Mr. Andre, please, yeah. here's the question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you said that uh, currently there is no competition uh, in Brunei Darussalam for this kind of business, this kind of industry. Uh, so yes. uh, for me, it can be two things. It can it possibly two things. First is that uh, now there is uh, no one that see the opportunity or the second that uh, most of people in Brunei, uh, they think that this is not feasible. So probably there are some there are some people that already uh, uh, see this opportunity, but but then they decide that this is not feasible. So uh, in your point of view, uh, how you see this? How you see this situation? Thank you. Oh, thank you for your question. Um, in my opinion, um, there would. Um, since Brunei already has a large uh, number of plastic waste, so it so um, the we can acquire a lot of we can acquire a lot of waste plastics to be recycled at a very cheap price, and we can also price our products at a slightly uh, more markup compared to the virgin plastic. Um, counterparts. However, um, we can also market our products to be um, to be eco more eco-friendly in a way that we are reusing the waste plastics, turning it into a new product. So that will appeal to the younger generation who are more um, environmentally conscious and will be more inclined to purchase products that are marketed to be more uh, environmentally friendly. And uh, the government uh, currently has a tender to get an incinerator, but however, that only solves the waste problem. And the incinerator also produces compact waste, but 
through recycling, the plastics will be repurposed into a new product and there will be less number of waste in the landfills. And the government has also called on to the local community to partner up towards, um, towards um, better um, environmental solutions. So we have the we will have the support of the local government. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Eco Solution. Next, uh, I will uh, give opportunity to team from Atoani Biopark. Please, uh, for Atoani, time is yours. Hello. Uh, can you see me? Sorry. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, Tim, please. The... Okay. Sorry, the slides in your side. So um, before I start, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Vilby from Ato Ani Biofac. So while the slides is being said. I think you missed, Ratna. Or can I, I use my slides? Eco solution. I think you missed Eco solutions. Ah, yeah, supposed yeah, to be. So why don't you get Eco solutions first? Yeah, sorry. yeah, sorry, sorry. So I'll stop. Maybe, yeah. Eco solution. So, solution. Okay. Okay, Eco Solution. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Can I start it now? Yes. Hello, I'm Raveli from Echo Solution, uh, analytics are update focus for sustainability product. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, I will start it my presentation with one question. Did you know what is the larger causes of the climate change after pollution? Yeah, that is solid waste. Please, next slide. In fact, in Indonesia, in 2019, Indonesia was the second largest solid waste producer in the world. From datawordbank.org, uh, the first graphic show us plastic waste is in, is in the third place, beside pep, paper waste and organic waste. But they cannot be easily to be degradable, and plastic not. Move to the second graphic. Some of polymer can be easily to be degradable, uh, some easily to be recycled, like PP and PET but some of other cannot be recycled, like LDPE and polystyrene. Now our focus is in the polystyrene. Find new material to substitute it, it will be our solution. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Click, please, okay. We select tapioca solid waste for our main material, or in Indonesia, we call, we call it ongo. From ongo, we convert it into biofilm and can be used for many functions like transport, coffee tray, tray, and others. Next slide, please. From comparison table below, biofilm has more advantages than styrofoam and paper transport. Next slide, please. How big is the market? There are some facts can answer it. First, our world population is still increasingly 10 percent for 10 years. And the second, in the pandemic era, takeaway and delivery become the food and NB industry, become the culture of food and the industry. And it is packaging to ensure the packaging and that food are still hygiene. And the last, demand for the world packaging industry will reach $1.05 trillion. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, we also validating our market. Nowadays, sustainable become 
sustainable packaging become the trend, and most of millennials love it. Second, fast food industry are exploring to single-use fiber packaging models. McDonald's collaborating with Recycle, Burger King collaborating with Loop, and other several parties looking for it too. And the last, from this graphic, we can conclude. Packaging industry is still in positive trend, and biofoam with the largest CRCR. Can next please? Next slide, please. Those are our competitive advantages, and we totally support to move from linear economy to circular economy. Next slide, please. There are some marketing strategy for our product. There are online shop, there are supermarket demanding fruit and vegetable tray, and an egg tray. There are catering and restaurant demanding lunchbox and coffee tray. There, and there, the last is distributor. Next slide, please. We also have business our business from it. Uh, we divided into three steps: pilot project, scale up, and dream. After all, our pilot project got positive response from several party. We targeted to cooperate with all tapioca manufacturer in Indonesia and started building our forming factory, central forming factory. So our plan around tapioca manufacturer just will just make intermediate product and send it to to central. Next slide, please. We also calculating our potential revenue from potential resources in Indonesia. There are 100. 40 Casa Fostad manufacture with total production 12 million ton and its equivalent with 28 million ton of ongo. Uh, for its research, if we only use 10% of ongo, so we can make 28 trillion lunch box and our potential revenue is can be 280 million dollars. Next slide, please. Sorry, you have one minute left. So now our eco solution have three, <laughs> sorry. Uh, now, EcoSolution have three amazing people with different background. I'm Rafaeli, have many engineering background. Arianto have semi engineering background, and Vinny Kamson has agro technology technology background. And next slide, please. So that's all our presentation. A quote from Robert Sound say, the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it. So let's take part in this journey together with Echo Solution and thank you. Okay, thank you Echo Solution. Next, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Andre to give a question to panelists, please. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for the uh, great presentation and I really like the final quote on that. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, the first question is, besides uh, the benefit, environmental benefit of the product itself, is there any other benefits uh, during the whole business, whole operation of this, of this business operation? What are other benefits? Especially when you talk about the farmer, uh, you also mentioned that there are farmers that uh, include in your business uh, operation what kind of benefits that they get from this uh, business. And then the second question is that uh, when you produce this biofoam, is there any environmental risk during the process? And what kind of environmental risk that you investigate during the process of making this biofoam? I understand that the, the raw material is from Ongo itself, but when you process the ongo into this biofoam and then biofoam into this uh, different kind of uh, packaging, is there any uh, environmental risk during that process? Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Andre. That's a good question for me and for us. Uh, the first question, uh, maybe benefit others after we, we do this business. First is new jobs. We can create new jobs around tapioca manufacture. Around tapioca manufacture, there is a farmer, but we know a farmer is uh, uh, their their man their financial money is very low in Indonesia. So after we create this uh, this plan around tapioca manufacture, we hope 
new jobs can be can be accessed for that. And secondly, uh, we 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 hire tapioca manufacturer to reducing their waste because uh, Ongo is more uh, more than, more producing than tapioca starch. And most of, uh, now, Ongo is used for making sauce and uh, for feed, for animal feed, but it's only a small quantity. So Ongo is still, uh, but some of company like uh, Budi Starts in Indonesia, just exploring to, to making a fertilizer. But, uh, for, but it's not, uh, according to us, it's not. Uh, it's just make a low margin for that business. Uh, so, uh, can you repeat the second question, Mr. Andre? Uh, the second question is, uh, what are environmental risk okay. uh, in the process of uh, producing this biofoam from Ongo and then from biofoam into the packaging uh, packaging product? Okay, thank you, Mr. Andre. Uh, for now, uh, we just find uh, one thing and one environmental risk. It needs it needs a high cost for electricity, and we know electricity in Indonesia from carbon. So we hope uh, after we can uh, we hope we can invest invest to to green electricity. Thank you, Mr. Andre. I hope this will answer your question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and I would like to ask uh, Mr. Thomas from ASEAN Network. Do you have a question to the finally? Um, I just um, also very keen on yes, understanding Thomas, more of your supply because you're getting this uh, cassava and the farmers. Uh, how And they have alternative users. Huh? including making very delicious Indonesian cakes from the same stuff. So how sure are you of your supply in order to meet your demand and your production? Uh, thank you, Mr. Thomas. Uh, for your information, uh, a whole cassava is only, uh, is only used uh, likely 33% or one, uh, yeah, 33% for cassava struts. And others, uh, other others composition is waste from cassava manufacture. So uh, we we I and mostly uh, cassava uh, cassava can be make a cake, but it use uh, but but to make a cake it use it it must use cassava struts. But cassava waste like ongo and cassava cell. And cassava water is not used for that industry. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Next, uh, there is a presentation from Atoani Biotech for Atoani. The time is yours. So we can see me. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So hi again, I'm Wilvia Nyora from Atani Biofax. So um, next slide, please. So before I share our scale up, and um, I would like to first um, share to you some of the problems that we thought to address. So first, let's look at these numbers. Plastic usage is growing each day and is worsened by the pandemic. Then we have the abundance of agricultural waste, sugarcane bagasse, corn husks, and rice straws that is not only heavily produced in my country, which is evident in these numbers, but also in neighboring Southeast Asian countries and the world as well. Next slide, please. Now, as for the plastic waste problem, this is heightened by e-commerce. For agricultural waste, most are incinerated for energy and disposal. Then there is the reliance of wood pulp as raw material, which results to unsustainable tree cutting, as well as reliance on recycled pulp by manufacturers resulting to low quality product and shortage of this raw material. Next slide, please. Now to address this problem, our scale-up proposal is to use agricultural waste in combination with a high cellulosic content 
and favorable properties have converted into pulp in the conversion hubs to be run by Atoani Biopack and to be distributed to partner manufacturers, which produces the final packaging products distributed to Atoani Biopack's B2B customers. In this case, our function is not only to provide pulp, but also to drive demand to these manufacturers through our marketing and sales efforts under the produce to demand system where manufacturers only produce that which is pre-ordered by customers. This reduces the waste of packaging products more than what is demanded. In addition, Ato Atning Biopack provides custom support to customers in terms of product design and alignment to branding, which is lacking for most manufacturers. This process ensures that we are able to integrate the use of high quality pulp um, from agricultural waste without having to take up too much investment in the setup of processing plants for product commercialization. Now, how will the scale up be plan be materialized? Next slide, please. So this is through the support of these organizations where we have committed collaborations and alignment. In terms of agri um, acquiring agricultural waste, connection to farming communities will be through Atoani Agriculture, that's our mother venture, which has access to farmers and impact organizations. We also have advisory support from these organizations as being part of their incubation program. As for manufacturers, um, we have a committed collaboration with the head of these industry organizations in the pulp and paper industry to connect us with paper and packaging manufacturers um, following setup of the pulp conversion hubs where they have identified in their industry roadmap that this is the gap. And this scale-up proposal was also already aligned to the industry roadmap through discussions with these government institutions in the environment and the Board of Investments. For technical advisory, we have a collaboration with the Philippine Inventor Society. Now, as per the case of customers, there are 17 small businesses, one NGO interested, and they are members of our existing Atoani Biopax Community of Sustainable Packaging Advocates. For location-based targeting, this is already an initial scoping of 16 customers in the Visayas. Next slide, please. So, next slide, sir. Next, no, sorry, next slide. Looking at the potential of the green packaging industry in 2025, sorry, back, but it is, it is forecasted, the, the previous one, sorry. The previous one, sorry, previous, yeah, previous to that. But I, I'll share na lang, sige. Looking at the potential, you know, for green um, packaging after that. Yeah, the forecast is that. Uh, next slide, after that, please. Yeah, the forecast is $300 billion market value, the high regional growth in Asia. Next slide, please. Now, as for the gaps, um, addressed by the scale-up proposal. We, in the, our country, there is reliance on imports from China, which causes high cost, of, high cost of green packaging due to logistics, uh, which will be reduced when we have this. In the case of our country, no manufacturer is currently converting agri-waste into pulp, so there is a huge potential for extensive application of our scale-up plan in the Philippines and in other countries as, as well, with such abundance of agricultural waste that can produce high-quality packaging. As for the impact potential, there would be reduction in plastic consumption, less reliance on recycled part, support the farming communities through additional income, for a conversion of this high volume agri waste into valuable products, reducing incineration and wastage. Next slide, please. In terms of um, the business model, Ato Ani Biopack, next, next slide, will make money of course, through the sales of, pack of the packaging products to the partner manufacturers, as well as the sales of pulp to partner and customer manufacturers needing the pulp. Yeah, uh, prior to that. Needing the pulp from agri-raised. Um, previous slide. And additional revenue will be generated from co-creation of product design and branding, um, customized to the needs of large B2B customers. As for the target market, this includes the following market categories from stores, um, shops, manufacturers, food establishments, and indicated as well here is the interest and initial engagement we have for each category. Now, next slide. So, next slide. These are the following activities that will be implemented for the scale-up proposal from um, to technical planning up to the continuous improvement and commercialization of the system. Last slide. So with this, we hope that you would support um, Atoani Biopack in scaling our mission of reducing plastic waste and agricultural waste through environmentally friendly packaging solution, but under the pulp conversion hub and produce the demand system set up while helping farming communities. Thank you.
Okay, thank you. Now I would like to invite Mr. Arisman from CCS to have uh, to raise a question to us. Hello. Yeah. Thank you, Atoani. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Atoani, for your presentation. Yeah, you hear me, Atoani? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, considering the current economic uncertainty due to COVID-19 or pandemic, could you identify three reasons why uh, someone would invest in your business? Thank you. Okay. First off, um, as we've mentioned, uh, we, this is a gap in the market. There is a large potential for it because majority of the products that we have here are imported. And as we all know, um, in, like now logistics is very hard. And so importing... Um, Every product from China, for example, is is barely expensive, and it wouldn't, um, you know, bring prosperity in the local economy. So, as an investor, I would definitely invest because in the local scene, there is the raw material is present. It's not, um, it's not maximized to its full potential. It's agri waste. Definitely, it would be disposed or incinerated, and then there is a market for it. And then there's it, this is the gap identified by the, the government and the industry organizations as well. And there is already a collaboration with these industry organizations and um, potential for the existing manufacturers to have. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, I would like to invite... Uh, oh, okay, please, uh, Pak Herman. Okay, uh, so... Who would be your potential uh, big competitor? Sorry, we have identified, uh, we've shared some small businesses, NGOs, where we have um, collaborated with. So it's in our target market, sir. But you're asking for the potential, which was more than what we have indicated. Definitely the FMCGs. Which is how, how, how do you plan to deal with it? Actually, as we mentioned here, we start with the small businesses. We have an existing community of sustainable packaging advocates. is a um, is a community of small business owners, NGOs, industry organizations as well. We start with that. So, but the bigger plan is to work with um, large businesses. But fairly, in a with the small businesses alone, it is a large potential as well because uh, ninety percent of the Philippines is in the SM MSMEs. So, yeah, if it's actually the market. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Next, I would like to invite Fifth Express, the team from Fifth Express, please. Hi, good afternoon. I'm representing Fifth Express. All right, so this is our business scale up plan. Next slide, please. The Philippines is the third largest contributor to marine plastic pollution, mainly because of plastic packaging, and it's driven by the Philippine sachet economy. Next slide. The usage of plastic packaging is heavily entrenched in the corporate system here in our country, and the data you see on screen is a staggering amount of plastics that we use daily. Next slide. With the 2020 pandemic, it has led to even more plastic packaging waste as people has prioritized safety and convenience. Next slide. Right, the Next slide. The quarantine life and the change in consumer buying patterns has pushed the surge of e-commerce and home deliveries, which uses excessive plastic packaging that becomes waste right away. Next slide. Right. So the good thing is that consumers are now on the lookout for environmental impact and they demand for corporate sustainability. So with this shift in consumer psyche, businesses need to be more sustainable now in order to become to continue being relevant to their value driven cost customers. Next slide. So there are two key realities at the moment in our country. First, there's no efficient plastic packaging alternative that's that's available. And second, it's not readily accessible. Next slide. The current leading logistics couriers in the country operate with traditional business models and plastic packaging. So businesses and consumers are stuck in the system, especially now in the e-commerce age. Next. 
So, we at Thrift Express offer an innovative solution to make plastic-free delivery possible here in the Philippines. What we do is we complement the current processes in place and build a sustainable logistics ecosystem that will collectively help reduce our plastic footprint. Next. We break the norm by switching from traditional plastic poly mailers and using compostable packaging instead. So these are certified okay to compost at home and decompose us within 180 days. It's a stark difference versus plastic, which can take a thousand years to degrade. We also use a digitized e label system and an optimized operations plan. Next. Our main goal is to switch as much packages as we could to plastic free delivery and advocate for responsible e commerce. And hence, our, our target clientele are businesses and online retailers who have a large share of volume when it comes to deliveries. Next. To make it compelling, um, we make sure to provide our clients their expected logistics service, but better. We are sustainable, reliable, and we tailor fit to their needs. Next. Okay, so since our soft launch last February 2020, we are very proud to say that we are on track with our advocacy and business goals. In just five months of sales alone this year, from January to May, we are already at 64% versus our total year sales last year. And we are on track to hit our sales target this year. And with our service, we were able to avoid over 3,000 kilograms of plastic packaging already and spread our plastic-free advocacy to a growing community of 7,000 um, clients and 12,000 followers on Instagram. Next. So with this, we have two key goals for an aggressive scale-up for the next three years. First, we need to drive business and environmental impact uh, by increasing the volume of packages that we deliver. And second, we want to improve our profitability through an added revenue stream. Next slide. To activate these, our first strategy is to expand our shipping coverage through a combination of franchise and third-party career partnership. Next slide. Yeah, we, was, we will establish a responsible e-commerce partnership with the key retailers in the country and automate our system. Next slide. And lastly, we will be adding a revenue stream that is non-dependent on volume. Next slide. Sorry, you have one minute left. Sure. We made an estimate projection based on the target average monthly package volume, which again, for us, is the biggest indication of business and environmental impact. So with the top line strategies that we presented, plus an added advertising support, we will be able to increase our monthly packages by about 300% year on year. And this will move our bottom line accordingly as well. Next slide. With these, our 2024 targets are as follows. We want to be able to avoid a, an equivalent of 120 metric tons of plastic packaging, switch 2.5 million packages to sustainable delivery, and be the top of mind brand when it comes to plastic free sustainable delivery partner in the Philippines. Next slide. This is my last. Our key asks are capital support, tech partnership, and business mentorship. So we really believe that with our single-minded focus on the plastic-free advocacy plus our mindset on just being problem-solving and results-driven, we will be a game-changer in reducing our plastic footprint here in the country, one shipping at a time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to invite Dr. Mubarik Ahmad to give a question to finalists. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, well, uh, congratulations to this uh, to the team of the FIFA Express. Uh, this is a very interesting business proposal in my mind. Um, yeah, very creative solutions. Um, um, and then with this, I think if this is uh, starting, then there, there will be a lot more to add to that uh, in my mind, uh, including, for instance, the, the uh, reusable packaging uh, materials and things like that. Um, I, I know that because uh, someone around here is also trying to do that. Um, my questions will be related to the financial information. Um, if, if I look into your tables uh, in, in, in the proposals, um, I'm, I'm a bit wondering, uh, the, the additional revenue, you have the, the uh, income statements and then after the income from operations, you have their uh, additional, revenue. additional revenues. And there are three items under that. Uh, and then among the three items also, uh, there is a line that's called mailers. Sorry, these are rather technical questions, but I think yeah. this is important to understand. What are they? How, what are those three? Uh, and how it is related to the main operations? 
and why there is another line about mailers in that mm -hmm. in the trick. Uh, this one questions. The other one is that um, um, I also look at the the uh, projections underneath that the, the the table that I mentioned earlier. I found that the additional income, uh, the B, uh, the non-operating income uh, mm -hmm. or, or the additional income is bigger than the, the main one, even three times higher. Um, so I was wondering how, how could that be possible? And then it, it's, it's, not, it's not like that in the following years. So how would you explain that? Uh, I, I wonder if there is any corrections already about the tables, just, just said so I think we can do that. No problem. Um, if I may actually ask um, our host to, to, to go back, or if you can flash slide number um, slide number 18. Yeah, but yes, sir, uh, we actually made a correction. But I'll be explaining it, don't worry. Right, so to, to go to your first question, um, yes, we indeed um, have three additional lines after the income. It's uh, it's named franchise, it's mailers, and then advertising mailers. Um, what we really, it's, it's more of a matter of wording. The franchise and the last line, the last mailers, um, are just uh, additional revenue from our, from, uh, from expanding um, through four more provinces here in the Philippines through a par franchise partnership. Sorry, um, host, uh, it's slide number 18. Yeah, so it's additional because um, it doesn't have a an op we uh, it's separate from the operation cost already. Sorry, I was I was just thinking that that uh, that line mailers uh, if mm -hmm. it is from from related to the franchise uh, income. Yes, it's um, related to franchise. Um, that particular that line on mailers. Um, mm. It's related to the franchise because we earn from the number one the advertising program that we mentioned the added revenue stream. So we will be listing, uh, we, we will be featuring Earth Warrior brands on our mailers. So we so earn the, from that. And the, then so the, the the franchise revenue there is that only the 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 franchise fee outside the mailers income? Yes. Oh, I see. So I think that's need to be clarified. And this one. Uh, okay. And what about uh, what about the second question about the the number that is three times bigger than, uh, well, two, two times bigger in total than the the main operating income. If you it's look like at before the, that, please. Yeah, uh, if you look at the well, I'm looking at your table, the second column. Uh, yes, um, and then the total income from operations is four thousand seven hundred something. And then uh, the total income from from the th the three additional incomes are more than ten thousands. Um, how would that be possible? The additional incomes are bigger than than uh, the main operations. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. I, I don't have that. I I don't think I get that information from the tax. That's why I'm asking. Okay. Okay. Sure. Um, it's really because. With the increase in volume of packages that we deliver, um, we maximize our current operating expenses. So the more volume that we deliver, um, there's less movement in the operating expenses um, that we have. So financial-wise, really, it really makes sense for us to go for bigger volume. That's really the, the main context there. Um. Oh, okay. The and then one one last question. Um, uh, the the number shows that you are not expanding your franchise. You are not planning to expanding your franchise in the year two and three. We are we are just continuing our franchise for years two and three, um, but uh, but but complementing it with a third party career partnership. So the franchise. Is um is planned for Greater Metro Manila only, so it's a uh, it's w still within, uh, it's nearby the Metro Manila area. But for nationwide, we want to be to to it makes more sense for us to partner with third party careers um operationally. 
Okay, so yeah, thanks for that um, explanation. Next, the last uh, finalist uh, from like whole team presentation, please. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Clear is not. Yes, clear. Okay. Presentation is start right now. Yeah. Okay. Next slide. Okay. Garbage is still the problem for Indonesia. The data show that the more than 70 million tons of waste in Indonesia annually. In a landfill, there are many months of garbage. So we concern about the situation. Our goal is to process those garbage. We focus on processing plastic because it takes or hundreds of years to this plastic to decompose into the ground. The garbage must not be thrown away. For example, plastic, cans, metal, and others. This garbage, in fact, can be sold. Next. Okay. In Indonesia, we know we have many garbage collectors. These collectors are the people who come to pick up the garbage to houses. They are willing to buy the garbage from people who want to sell them. Their current problem is that they have difficulty in finding customer because they just go around to the houses or to the residents one by one without knowing with customer will sell the garbage to them. The fact is their economy and life is still under property. Next. Okay, I think it's not efficient because uh, it's very complicated. Next. Okay. So we provide solution to the residents and garbage collector took this application. This application namely Kapul will connect residents with the collector in real time. So we will couple into version, website, and apps. Next. They are featuring the next. They are featuring the app, this such as directory, in which we provide solution and information about what kind of ways that can be sold in its price. With this feature, it's expected that, that the public can know what kind of garbage can be sold in the application couple. Next. Okay. Uh, for you, for the user of this app, they just simply need to enter their address, and then using GPS, the user will be, the user will be able to see the closest driver of garbage collector from their address. With service couple, a uh, uh, customer sell recycle trash easily, uh, get cash from your trust and last and then uh, save our envi environment. Next. Okay, this is before uh, af a couple already in community and after. It's very different. Next. Couple is, uh, right now is uh, operate in Medan in Medan City. Next. Okay. Our vision and mission is uh, to become a large technology company in Indonesia, which engages in waste management and providing innovation in waste problem in Indonesia. Mission, couple mission is uh, realizing a waste-free Indonesia by changing people's mindset about waste in the value opportunity for blessing and fortune. Next. Okay, our advantage is one uh, couple is pioneer in Medan City. All, all couple driver come from uh, from real trash collectors. Uh, right now, couple can sell more than sixty types organic and in or, organic and inorganic waste, uh, high trash price, uh, high higher trash price, and free trash pickup service. And last. Cell dress, uh, user friendly. Next.
our our couple program a uh, couple have uh, offered program one donate with trust uh, to pay to pay tuition free with trust uh, then and buy groceries with trust like like this next this is a uh, Sorry, you have one minute left. Okay. This is a uh, effective trash uh, like paper, cardboard, cans, aluminum, metal, and etc. Next. Uh, special ways only in education pool use a uh, user can cooking oil ways, uh, organic ways, and packing ways. Next. This is market validation. We have uh, in, in in Medan, we have uh, 2,000 tons trash uh, every day. Next. Our traction is, uh, right now I have oh, 100 collectors, more than 4,000 active user, and more than uh, 10,000 10, traction. And after uh, we have uh, collected by uh, community uh, more than for four four hundred tons. Next. Sorry, your time is up. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Miss Maya Tamimi from Unilever Indonesia to give a question to final list. List. Yeah. Hello, hi uh, Abdul Lati. Hi. Congratulations uh, that you are becoming the 10th uh, finalist for this uh, challenge, uh, Innovation Challenge. Uh, I have some uh, question. I think uh, your uh, initiative is very good because you are trying to facilitating the informal sectors like uh, the collectors or yes. uh, and then also the consumer or the people who wants to be part of the recycling system. Yes. Uh, uh, to understand about the sustainability of this business, uh, I would like to understand, uh, if I'm not mistaken, looking at your uh, uh, brief, uh, written brief that uh, you charge around 1,000 rupiah per transaction Yes. And who is uh, paying that? Is it the collectors or is it the consumers? Mm -hmm. Commission is uh, for cost customers. So the one who pay it's the customers. Yes, because customer uh, get uh, Im get impact and uh, get imp uh, get uh, money from your trust. Their tries get them right. Oh, okay, all right. So, uh, and then the other uh, one is that uh, what type of the waste that is usually uh, that mostly sell through Kapul? Because I saw in the picture mostly it's a uh, it looks like it's a uh, metals. If it's yes. if it is not correct, then. Um, uh, how much uh, plastic uh, actually that uh, you have already uh, been transact uh, been uh, traded through this uh, couple up since uh, the beginning? Okay. Just to understand. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a collected plastic uh, from uh, thir four thousand uh, for four hundred for four hundred tons. Can I uh, we call it uh, after? more than 10 between 20 percent from from trash that i collect yeah. uh -oh. the 10 percent 10 thousand more than 10 percent oh, okay all right so because if it is mostly plastic then i believe uh, the the revenue is not that high yes because, uh, yeah it should be from metals and others yeah <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. About the expansion, if you won this uh, award, uh, this challenge, so what is the, the plan? Because I couldn't see it clearly in the, the proposal. Yes, because uh, this is my, I have a master friend for a couple because a couple is like Uber. 
uh, Uber is a pick up a customer from home. Uh, Kepul is pick up trash and waste from home. Is it, is it uh, similar? But uh, but different object, right? Because uh, I have a uh, I have dream to bring Kapul uh, expand to Indonesia, expand to national is uh, from Medan to Indonesia because uh, garbage is a big problem for Indonesia. I think if I if I uh, if Kapul operate uh, around in Indonesia um, problem. Uh, Waste problem can be solved, right? Because uh, I think it's many challenges, many uh, many things. It's very hard uh, to be uh, to be um, expand to Indonesia. But I think um, I believe that Kapul can like unicorn Indonesia. Can to be unique next unicorn in Indonesia. Okay, um, do you have still have time, uh, Mbak? Boleh ya? Give me uh, one minute. <laughs> okay, um, just to understand because you said that most of the type of uh, waste uh, traded in the kapul is actually other than plastic, uh, mainly like. Uh, uh, metals and I know the the price of metal is very significant. Yes. Just uh, wondering, uh, do you uh, do audit uh, with your uh, collectors partners mm -hmm. on what they will do with the trash? I was afraid. Uh, how can we be sure that when they uh, go to customer and pick all the waste that is uh, given by the customer, they are uh, the collector will then. Uh, bring it to the recycling stream, not just then tra tra uh, trash it away to the environment. How do you ensure that? Because I have an experience myself that when I uh, have engaged with the lapak around my house uh, and then they, they uh, he, he took everything, but later on, I understand that what he took is uh, really the, the the most valuable. While the others, they, he just put it back again in the environment. They trash it uh, everywhere. Everywhere. So, just want to understand: uh, Have you ever done any uh, audit to them? If not, then I I suggest that you do random audit to to your partners, uh, collectors. Yeah, uh, I think it's uh, it's very challenging to different mindset. To collectors, because uh, they're they're already a bad mindset because uh, they uh, lie to customer, uh, etc. I think uh, with the application couple, uh, I want to I want to um, I want to say uh, to customer. Uh, with Kapul, everything is good. Online is good because, uh, yeah, uh, customer can see the can see what are what I what um, what uh, we doing someone for environment in Indonesia because uh, I uh, I. Uh, I uh, I think yeah. that's enough. Please. Yeah, sorry, we have uh, times. Yeah, our time is uh, up now. So uh, I would like to continue our uh, event with uh, the most exciting part of this competition. Uh, we already get all scores from judges uh, to the business proposal that submitted to us from the, uh, the 10 finalists. So I would like to invite uh, Ambassador uh, Morten Hoekland, Ambassador Norway to ASEAN, to announce and give the finalist prize virtually and followed by uh, deliver the closing remark for this event. For Ambassador Morten, time is thank, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for uh, letting me be part of this. It's been very exciting. 
to listen to everybody. And uh, I want to congratulate all the finalists. Um, I think you all have unique uh, um, products and business ideas. And I, uh, I do believe you have a future, all of you. I also want to thank the judges um, who have uh, um, gone through all these uh, finalists and asked the questions and uh, given them inspiration. I was also particularly um, inspired when um, partnerships between the competitors started uh, appearing or have already appeared. And I think that is uh, the way to go. Uh, you learn from each other, you see uh, possibilities of connecting and cooperating. Um, this is what we want to see happen. Uh, the problem and the task is so huge that uh, one idea and one company or one NGO can never ever solve this issue alone. Um, Norway is proud to work with uh, um, with uh, uh, CSEAS, ASEAN Foundation, um, and the others and ASEAN uh, countries uh, to try to tackle the issue of um, marine littering, um, the issue of plastic pollution. Um, so, and we want to continue to do so. Uh, I'm not going to keep the suspense uh, very much longer. I know there was a quite a very narrow gap between the winners. They were, uh, so it's not, um, um, of course, you are all winners, but we have to select one who receives the prize. And that uh, will, this time, go to Kios, who will receive $10,000. And congratulations and the best of success to you and to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Morten, and congratulations for Kios. Maybe I would like to invite Kios for give a one minute uh, expression, maybe. Please, for Kios. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Hello? Yes, we can uh, hear you. That is a surprise. Uh, thank you so much for um, having Kios as a winner. And it will be a great opportunity for us to have this fresh fund uh, to expand to more locations. Uh, and also, I think uh, what is great is that uh, this is an opportunity for me and for Kios to, to connect to the other uh, ventures and also to stakeholders that participate in this event. Uh, thank you so much. I, I don't have anything more to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Kios, and congratulations to, to you. So we have the end uh, of this event. And on behalf of organizer, I would like to extend once again our deepest appreciation to all of uh, the finalists for your support and participation. We also very sorry uh, of the running of time and also for the all the technicalities problem. And uh, we wish you uh, enjoy your day and uh, have a good health and stay safe. So once again, congratulations to Kios and. Thank you and bye. See you in another opportunity. Congratulations, Kios. Congratulations, all of you for the well organizing. Great to be with you. Thank 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 you.